Hello, in this video, we're going to solve for the profit maximizing price and output level under Cartel, Bertrand, Carnot, and Stackelberg competition. Consider a market with two firms, each producing identical goods, that face an inverse market demand of price equals 180 minus 2 times Q, the industry output. Each firm's marginal cost is going to be constant at $20. And once again, we're going to solve for the profit maximizing price and output under these various market structures, Cartel or the collusion outcome, Bertrand, Carnot, and Stackelberg. We're going to start with Cartel. Once again, our inverse market demand and marginal cost. We're going to first get the revenue. Revenue is price times quantity. Where I have the price, I'm going to replace that with 180 minus 2Q. So I make that substitution in for the price. And now simplify the right-hand side. 180 times Q and minus 2Q times Q, we get this. Now we're going to get marginal revenue. We're going to take the derivative of the revenue equation with respect to Q. The derivative of 180Q is 180. The derivative of minus 2Q squared, we're going to take this exponent and bring it down in front. So we're going to get 2 times 2 in front. That's where the 4 is coming from. And then we subtract 1 from that exponent, leaving us just with Q raised to the power of 1, or just Q. Profit maximization, let's set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. So 180 minus 4Q equals 20. And now we're going to solve for Q. Subtracting 20 from both sides, adding 4Q to both sides, and now dividing through by 4. 160 divided by 4 gives us 40. So the market output here under cartel is 40 units. Each firm will assume is going to produce half that output, so each firm will produce 20 units. In terms of the market price, we're going to take the market output of 40 and plug it into the inverse market demand. 180 minus 80 gives us a price here of $100 under cartel. And the cartel outcome is the monopoly outcome. Moving on, under Bertrand, reminding us that the market inverse demand is 180 minus 2Q and marginal cost is 20. For Bertrand, we get the competitive outcome, price equals marginal cost. So we're going to set price equal to $20, so that is the market price. To get the quantity, we're going to plug this $20 into the inverse market demand and solve for Q. So subtracting 180 from both sides, the minus sides on both sides cancel, and finally dividing through by 2. The outcome here is going to be 80 units under Bertrand. And we can assume each firm will produce half uh, this output, so each firm produces 40 units. And now Carnot. Here is our inverse market demand. We're going to recognize that the quantity of output is the output of firm 1 plus firm 2. So making that substitution in for capital Q, we plug in Q subscript 1 plus Q subscript 2 for firm 1 and firm 2's output. And we get firm 1's revenue, which is price times the output of firm 1. So for P, I'm going to replace it with this equation on top here, making that substitution. Now we're going to simplify the right-hand side. 180 times Q subscript 1 minus 2 Q subscript 1 times another Q subscript 1. We get this middle term. And then finally, minus 2 times Q subscript 2 times Q subscript 1 leaves us this result. And now we're going to get marginal revenue by taking the partial derivative of this revenue equation with respect to Q subscript 1. And we get the following result here. We'll set this marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Marginal cost is constant at $20, recall. And we're going to solve this for Q subscript 1. Subtracting 20 from both sides and then moving this minus 4 Q subscript 1 over to the right-hand side. And now let's divide through by 4. So 160 divided by 4 is 40. Minus 2 divided by 4 leaves us with minus 0 0.5. And we're going to call this firm 1's reaction function. Still on Carnot, we're going to do a similar thing, but this time for firm 2. And now we're going to get firm 2's revenue, which is price times firm 2's output. We're going to make a substitution in for P, plugging in this equation up here. And now simplifying the right-hand side, 180 times Q subscript 2 minus 2Q subscript 1 times Q subscript 2 
uh, minus 2 q subscript 2 times q subscript 2, and so on. The next step is to take a partial derivative of the revenue equation with respect to firm 2's output, and we get back this result right here. And now setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, and solving for firm 2's output, q subscript 2, subtracting 20 from both sides, dividing through by 4, we get firm 2's reaction function, which is a mirror image of firm 1's reaction function. So we found two reaction functions, firm 1 and firm 2's reaction function. We got two equations and two unknowns. So I'm going to substitute firm 2's reaction function into firm 1's reaction function, where we have this q subscript 2. I'm going to replace it with this 40 minus 1 half q subscript 1. So making that substitution, we have this step right here. And now we've got one equation, one unknown. Let's solve it for q subscript 1. So minus 0.5 times 40 is minus 20. Minus 0.5 times minus 0.5 gives us this plus 0 0.25. And we've got the q subscript 1 there. And simplifying some more, 40 minus 20. And now we're going to subtract this 0 0.25 q subscript 1 from both sides. So our left-hand side now looks like this. So this 1 minus a 0 0.25 will leave us with 0 0.75 q subscript 1. And that all equals 20. A little division here. Firm 1 will produce 26.67 units of output. Firm 2's reaction function, once we plug in this 26.67 into it, we'll see that firm 2 will also produce 26.67 units of output. So once we have firm 1's output, we're going to take that output and plug it into firm 2's reaction function to get firm 2's best response. The total industry output is going to be Q subscript 1 plus Q subscript 2, or 53.33. There's a little rounding here. And then let's get the market or industry price. We're going to plug this Q into our inverse market demand. Once we do that, we see that we have an industry price of $73.33. All right, let's move on to our last market structure, that of Stackelberg. Firm 1 will be the Stackelberg leader, setting its output first, and Firm 2 will then respond. Recall that Firm 2's reaction function from the Carnot model was given as follows. So Firm 1, we have its price equation, and what we're going to do is we're going to plug in Firm 2's reaction function into it, where we have Q subscript 2. We're going to replace it with this 40 minus 1 half Q subscript 1. So making that substitution. And now simplifying here a little bit. We get the following result. Simplifying some more. 180 minus 80 and minus 2 Q subscript 1 plus Q subscript 1. We have the following. Let's get firm 1's revenue, price times its output, making a substitution in for the price of 100 minus Q subscript 1. We have firm 1's revenue equation. Let's get marginal revenue by taking the derivative of that. And we're going to profit maximize by setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. So marginal revenue for firm 1 equal to the marginal cost of $20, solving for Q subscript 1. Firm 1 will produce 40 units. Firm 2, we're going to take firm 2's reaction function and evaluate it at 40 units of output for firm 1. And that give, gives firm 2's profit maximizing output level of 20. So in this Stackelberg, total industry or market output is firm 1's output plus firm 2's. In this case, we get 60 units of output, and the market price, plugging this 60 into Q here, we get a market price of $60, 180 minus 120. And to sum up then, the four market structures we looked at, the market price and the market output in each one of those. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.